and we are in week number two of our Bible reading for the month of August, which, as we said last week, brings us to the book of Philippians in Jeff's chronology. I always do that. So, <laughs> Just in case somebody if anyone disagrees, know where the phone calls need to go. They know in the email. That's exactly right. So, um, so in week two, we always, we always try to talk about the big idea. What's What's the major theme or themes maybe yeah. going on in the book? And so now we're going to find out today if you're really heretic. Oh. <laughs> so this is your is your my her- monthly test. This is your heresy test because right. I think okay when y'all think Philippians, <laughs> what is Philippians about? You know what everybody's going to say. Usually joy. Joy. Yeah. So the question for Jeff is. Oh boy. Is Philippians the joy book, or are you going to rob us of our joy today? I'm going to complicate it. How about that? <laughs> okay, so here's the thing. Nobody is surprised well, by that No, answer. no, 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 no. no I, we're deepening, right? That's the point. We're reading Paul. We're deepening our... No, because my two cents, I think, you know, you look at the way the book begins, going all the way back to, to chapter one and then the chapter two, and then, and then the most... Joy, I won't focus on the joy, but the most familiar part is the the, the, the the statement about Christ in chapter 2. And I think, and then you look at some of the things Paul says in chapter 3 and 4 when he gets to his more application part of his essay, as we talk about every month. Um, the, the, the thread all the way through is unity through having the same mind that Jesus had, which is selflessness. You know, put aside your ambition and everything else, have the mind of Christ, which is sacrificial selflessness for the sake of others. That will lead to unity, and that leads to joy. Peace and joy. So, so you are going to eventually get back to the joy thing, right? Yeah, as as a fruit of the harder work that we don't often again. And the trick is, and I hope as we're reading this book this month, we will work. This is one of those books of Paul's that we probably know better than others, at least the parts of it. But can we make the sense of the whole and why Paul, why these more familiar parts are in this particular letter? How Paul puts them together? That's a great point to make about Philippians. Yeah. It is a it is a cherry pick big time book. Big time. We have this phrase here. In this phrase chapter two is like. for the Lord's Supper. Yeah. Chapter four is for the edification it's, sermons. It's got a lot of it's got a lot of refrigerator door. Absolutely, so absolutely. So yeah, run this unity thing because that's uh, that that's not only interesting to me, but that is certainly a a constant theme in the New Testament letters and letters of Paul. Uh, yeah, you know, we saw that for example back in Ephesians, uh, be diligent to preserve the unity of the spirit and bond of peace. Yeah, thing. So talk about how you see the unity theme in Philippians. Okay, sure, sure. So chapter one, it starts subtle because you don't even use that word really until until in some ways you get more into chapter two and he begins to really emphasize it. And chapter one, he really just talks about the fact that he doesn't mind some preaching Christ from envy and rivalry while he's imprisoned as long as it's, it's the truth and, and Jesus' name and the gospel is being is being spread. And so you notice verse 17, the former proclaimed Christ of selfish ambition. Oh, wait a second. That's a word I usually associate with chapter 2, let nothing be done out of. So anyway, so he starts by showing how he himself models, you know, a, a he doesn't mind that others are trying to surpass him or get their names out there further while he's in prison as long as Jesus is being spread. It's not about Paul. And then he moves into chapter 2, well, actually in the chapters, chapter uh, 1, verse 27, that paragraph beginning, um, only let your manner of my manner of life be worthy of the gospel. I want to hear that you are standing firm in one spirit, one mind. Um, you know, so the beginnings of unity, don't call it unity, but oneness. Then chapter two, again, chapter breaks in the awful place. I, w- I wondered if you were going to complain Absolutely, about the chapter Absolutely, because really the essence of what he's talking about, having subtly modeled his own selflessness, as long as the gospel is out there, he doesn't mind that he's losing preacher market share, if we can put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> as long as, because it's not about Paul, you know, you don't want them looking at that. It's not about Paul. As long as the gospel is being truth, others may be doing it for the wrong motive. But if it's truth, I'm okay with that. Preachers need to remember that. Hundred percent, hundred percent. So, anyways, then he begins to model. You know, come more particular for them. I want you to have a oneness of mind. What's the oneness of mind? The oneness of mind. Then, and in chapter two, is do nothing from selfish ambition. Yeah. Oh, there's that word again. Yeah, or, or, or conceit models Jesus. But the rest of chapter two, because we quit reading. After that, or a lot of we quit reading. He gives two quick examples besides himself. Yes. That's why he brings up Timothy and Epaphroditus. I have nobody who thinks like Timothy does. Who verse twenty one will uh, everyone else seeks their own interests, but not those of Jesus Christ. But you know Timothy. He's not like that. And then Epaphroditus nearly yeah. loses his life for the sake of others' well being spiritually. Yeah. So what he's talked about there in the latter half of one, then what's exemplified in Jesus with these admonitions mixed in in the middle of that. Exactly. 
exactly. Now he says, look at these two guys you know. Yeah, exactly right. And then as you keep going, he gives a couple of examples. Then you move into chapter 3, and he, and he contrasts that chapter 3 beginning in verse in verse 2 with those who yeah. don't use the gospel or use truth that way. And, and in this case, have mixed some false doctrine in. But then he begins to talk about all that he personally has lost for the sake of the gospel. So again, this losing of self for the sake of the gospel spread, which will lead to unity. Um, and, you, and so you read some more about that, how his focus is, is all the way on that. But you get to chapter 4 then, and, and now... And, but let me interject. Oh yeah, please. There, there is in there, toward the end of 3 two, this... Uh, this this sharing and the similar purpose and, yes. and walk that's right that that you know if you're working the unity theme ties into that as well because yeah. we're all trying to do the same thing that's one of the things that binds us together absolutely one purpose absolutely okay thank you for that yeah and then he moved to chapter four and he gets in the, in the practical application in their specific congregation oh, yeah. that's why now he brings up Yodia and Syntyche names names yeah oh he does that's right and and the local church no less that's exactly right but what the whole point is he wants his whoever his true companion is he wants to help unify them you know he's given them a whole right. bunch of um, but we need to we need to get over this and then comes the rejoicing part and that's the point you know that the rejoicing in the full context of Philippians is a fruit of you know it's a fruit of the spirit in general we learned that in Galatians beginning of the year but now you see how practically that works in, in, in real life it is a fruit of all this other losing of self and, and sacrificial service to the gospel, to what others need spiritually, etc. Um, it it, it kind of illustrates the depth required for true joy. It isn't absolutely. just sort of this outside happiness smile you paint on uh, yeah. when you come to services, because you've all done that too, right? <laughs> had a big fight in the car on the way and then paint on the smile. Smile time. You come in. Yeah. I, I think sometimes spiritually <laughs> people people associate that with true joy. Yeah. Uh, you know, just sort of that, okay, i got to be happy and put on my happy face now. Right. But in reality, it's some really deep, and, and, and man, can I dare say this? Some of that, that's hard. Oh, sure. You've got to work at to really yeah. achieve. Though in a lot of sense, again, you know, the joy is a fruit. You know, it's the end result of process. all this other process. That yeah. is hard. I mean, that's the thing. You know, Paul is suffering in prison. But his whole point is, you know, I mean, again, this is working out for, for good things. And, um, and even when he's trying to decide, I'd rather go... And be, you know, back to chapter one. I'd rather go be with Christ, but it'd be better for y'all if I lived on. So that's my my confidence. So again, selflessness. And the more, and this is the real hard work, David, because it's so counterintuitive to our human nature. It's so counterintuitive to what we're picking up in the culture. The road to joy is losing a sense of self. In other words, it's, it's like so happiness. It is. Yeah, it, it, it's not the, way it's to be. the more you chase it for its own sake, the harder it is to find it. The more you lose yourself and quit worrying about whether I'm happy or joyful as such and do the hard work of chapters 1, 2, and 3, the more likely you are to get to chapter 4 and find that. That's a beautiful intertwining of this, uh, this need for unity and the work that requires and the joy that is yeah. that then grows out of that and expressed. So we're really glad you didn't steal our joy. <laughs> Try not so, to. so anyway, that's, that's a good thing to think about this week as you're working your way through the letter again. Philippians is nice and short, so this is like... I mean, we could read it once a day, every day. Oh, easily, yeah, week, right? absolutely. But, but, but watch for the idea. Watch, watch, obviously, for the joy that we've all expected to find in the book. But look for the way it's intertwined with this idea of of unity and the work that requires. And uh, if you have some questions about that, week three is for questions. And mm -hmm. tough in the text, we'll be happy to go back and challenge that. You just email to us, and uh, we'll we'll talk about those too. Hope you're blessed by your reading this week.